This is Earl Nightingale. The purpose of this recording is to tell you about and try to condense one of the most amazing books ever written, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Without question, this single book has had a greater influence on the lives, accomplishments, and fortunes of more individuals than any other work of its kind. All over the free world, there are literally thousands of successful men in all lines of work who are where they are today because they once picked up and bought a copy of Think and Grow Rich, and they'll be quick to tell you so. Let's talk about Napoleon Hill's famous 13 proven steps to riches as found in his book, Think and Grow Rich, remembering, of course, that riches are whatever it is you happen to want. The first principle, desire. Here is the starting point for all achievement, the first step toward riches. But it's right here that we so often run into a stumbling block. A person will say, I know what I desire, but can I get it? We'll get into this business of doubt later, but once and for all, let's clear up this point. This point of whether or not you can accomplish that which you desire with all your heart. I think it was best expressed by Emerson, who wrote, There is nothing capricious in nature, and the implanting of a desire indicates that its gratification is in the constitution of the creature that feels it. In other words, you would not have the desire unless you were capable of its achievement. Each of us has a built-in governor, and our desires are modified by our abilities and leanings. Whatever it is that you desire with all your heart, understand once and for all that it can and should be yours. In Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill cites example after example of why your burning desire is nothing more than an accurate picture of what you will one day become. So right here, firmly establish in your mind that which you desire more than anything else. For, as Helvetius put it, by annihilating the desires, you annihilate the mind. Every man without passions has within him no principle of action, nor motive to act. A good way to determine whether or not you really have a burning desire is to examine the way you go after it. If you go after that which you think you desire tentatively, timidly, in an attempt to play it safe, you don't have a burning desire at all. You can't get to second base if you keep one foot on first. But if you're willing to burn your bridges behind you and say once and for all, this is it, this is what I will do and I will never retreat, I'll never go back, then you have the sort of desire that can only end in success. It takes that kind of resolve to be able to keep picking yourself up after the falls you're bound to take. The only people who don't make mistakes are those who never try anything. The timid feeders in the lagoon who never venture into the broad deep sea beyond. While these principles will work for anything you may want, a more harmonious home life, a more successful career, for our example, let's say your desire happens to be more money, to better care for your family and provide for your future years, to get your share of the prosperity that lies ahead. Napoleon Hill gives us six definite practical steps to follow. One, fix in your mind the exact amount of money you desire. It is not sufficient merely to say, I want plenty of money. Be definite as to the amount. There's a psychological reason for definiteness which will be described in a subsequent principle. Number two, determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. There's no such reality as something for nothing. Three, establish a definite date when you intend to possess the money you desire. And four, create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you're ready or not, to put this plan into action. Five, Write out a clear, concise statement of the amount of money you intend to acquire, name the time limit for its acquisition, state what you intend to give in return for the money, and describe clearly the plan through which you intend to accumulate it. Six, read your written statement aloud twice daily, once just before retiring at night, and once after arising in the morning. As you read, See and feel and believe yourself already in possession of the money, or whatever your goal happens to be. It's important that you follow these instructions to the letter. Play this part of the record over until you have it down to your satisfaction, for this is by far the most important of the 13 principles, and this chapter of the book ends with these words. Through some strange and powerful principle of mental chemistry, which she has never divulged, nature wraps up in the impulse of strong desire that something which recognizes no such word as impossible and accepts no such reality as failure.